Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I'm going to cover a very, very basic Python package and set up, you know, Python packaging metadata. And then I'm going to show you declarative metadata and why I think it's better. Uh, so let's just jump into that. So to start, we're going to be making a small Python package that we're going to distribute. I'm not going to be using the source layout, but I will link the source layout video below in the description. Um, but we're just going to start with setup.py. I know, you know, pyproject.toml, you should use the brand new fancy stuff, but we're just going to use setup.py for today. Uh, but yeah, let's make our package first. Uh, I'm just going to call it, I don't know, hello world or something like that. So make dir hello world. This will be the namespace that we dist distribute. And we're going to give it an init.py. Uh, so it'll be a traditional, actual Python package. <laughs> there's there's an unfortunate thing about Python in that package means kind of two different things. Uh, one of them is slightly more correct. Like a, a Python package is a folder that contains an init.py file. Um, but a lot of people, including myself, because, you know, I'm wrong and it's easy, uh, refer to things that get distributed on PyPI as packages, although a more correct term is probably distribution or something like that, but whatever, I don't, <laughs> I don't actually care. Um, we're also going to add a, um, a little main script here that's just going to if name equals main, exit main, and if, you know, if I was making a package that's actually this simple, I would probably just do it in a single file. Uh, but I wanted to make a uh, actual Python package that, sh you know, demonstrates this dealio. Um, and yeah, I think that's enough. So let's jump into setup.py. I have a little cheat sheet so I don't forget everything. So I'm just opening that up off screen. Um, so we're going to start with the most basic packaging metadata first. And we're going to be using setup tools for this. Setup tools... Um, is kind of ubiquitous for creating packages now. You used to do this fun little dancey thing with disutils.core and some other stuff, but uh, for the most part, disutils is, you know, not happening anymore. <laughs> oh, I forgot to turn off my keyboard cam. Oh, well, you'll see my keyboard cam for this. From setup tools, import setup, um, and we will call the setup function, and this is where we pass in the metadata for our package, and setup is essentially just side effects that packages things up. And we'll start with name. Uh, we'll just call our thing Hello World, and we'll give it a version. Uh, I usually, I usually, uh, you know, be a little uh, skittish and start with version 0.0.0. .0, but it's usually a good idea to just start with version one. Just like get get on your semantic versioning from the beginning. I know semantic versioning. That's a whole different thing that people are up in arms about. I, you can use whatever versioning you want, but we're gonna assume we're using some amount of semantic versioning here. Um, Description is a good one to set. This package contains some sample hello world code. I don't know, something like that. Uh, what else do we need? We need author. So author would be me, Anthony Satilli. And there's usually author email as well. I'll add my email address that I use for open source. What else do we have? Oh, we also want a URL. Um, I'm not actually going to push this to GitHub, but if I were, it would be github.com slash asatili slash hello world. What else do we have? We have install requires, uh, which we don't actually have any dependencies, any runtime dependencies for this, uh, but you would fill them out here. You can just leave it in a, an empty list, although I usually prefer to just delete this line if it's the default value, because what's the point? Um, and... The next thing we need to do is list the actual Python packages we're going to be including, but we're going to be using a special little tool that does this for us, and that is the find packages helper from setup tools. From setup tools, import find packages. Now what find packages will do is it'll iterate over the file system here, and it'll look for things that have init.py files and add those to the packaging metadata automatically. Now, normally you could just, you know, list them manually, packages equals hello world, and this would work just fine. However, as your package grows, it's very easy to forget to add new things to this. And I can never remember whether it's, you know, hello world dot foo or is it hello world slash foo. I just, you know, can't be bothered. Oops, <laughs> that was not what I intended to do. Uh, let's get this back here. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I can never remember what the format is for packages, and it's very error prone to try and synchronize it with the file system manually. So there's this find packages helper, find packages, and oops, 
And by default, you can just call it like this. Just find packages, print, print. I usually have a directory for tests and have some test code in there. Test foo.py. Oh, tests has in it .py sometimes. Um, and often I will also have a testing directory, um, which has like helpers in it. Testing, and that'll also have an init.py. Um, what the heck happened there? So often I will have other namespaces in my uh, source code directory that I don't actually want to package. And unfortunately, uh, via bin python import setup tools, if we do setup tools dot find packages, it's actually going to find the tests and testing directories, but we don't actually want to distribute those namespaces to people that install our packages, because uh, otherwise they'll just get this you know garbage testing namespace that happens to be the helpers for my um, for my package. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to exclude those, and we'll pass the exclude here, and you can just do test star and testing star. Uh, I like to do a tuple here; it doesn't actually matter. Um, we do test star testing star you'll see that now we only get that package that we expected here we're no longer including tests and testing so that's packages and the last thing that we want to do is add um, and there's a whole bunch of other metadata here but we're I'm just doing kind of the basics here uh, the last thing that I want to add is a entry point and this is going to make it so that we can run the hello world as a program directly without having to run it as a module and the way you do that is with console scripts console scripts and you give the executable a name so maybe hello world cli or something like that and you pass it a dotted module path with the attribute at the end so in our case it was what hello world dot main yes hello underscore world dot main and then the function inside of this module is called main and this is our basic packaging metadata. Let's actually install it and see what it does. Virtual MVM, if we do pip install dot, that will install our package. And so you can see now if we do pip freeze, we'll see, <laughs> okay, that was not what I expected. Uh, okay, I guess pip has changed their pip freeze output to something that, oh no, I expected it to do hello world equals equals one, but Apparently they have changed some stuff, but that's fine, whatever. Um, maybe there's like a pip freeze legacy or something. Um, I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> anyway, we've installed our package and now we can do hello world cli and you'll see that it prints hello world and this actually ran our program. Okay, so that's like the very basics of setup tools metadata. Um, now I'm gonna convince you that you should never do this. <laughs> hopefully, uh, and that you should instead use a declarative setup. Um, and I'll show you two tools that you can use to make your declarative setup easier to manage. Uh, the first of those is if you have a classic setup.py based uh, distribution, you can use a tool that I wrote called setup.py upgrade. Let me open that up and show you guys the readme of that. GitHub.com setup.py upgrade. Spoilers, it just showed the other tool we're going to talk about. Um, but yeah, it, it takes a setup.py and automatically upgrades it to declarative metadata. What declarative metadata is, is instead of having code in setup.py, code in setup.py, so instead of having code here, <laughs> I mean, you still have to keep these two lines in this case. Uh, there are other cases where you don't need this, but we won't go into those. Uh, but instead of having code, you instead store your metadata as data, similar to this. And the nice thing about data versus code is it's really easy to rewrite data. Uh, there are tools that will load this into, you know, dictionary-like objects, and you can modify them and then write them back to disk. Whereas with your classic setup.py uh, example, which I can just grab the one that I was looking off over here, uh, with this, it's really hard to modify these values automatically because you need to do a code rewrite. And rewriting code is not so simple in Python. There are tools for it, but I don't know. I haven't found one that I like so far. But yeah, difficult to rewrite this automatically, whereas metadata is really easy to rewrite. Um, so I wrote this tool called setup.py upgrade, and you basically just pass it a directory and it will upgrade your setup.py automatically. So if we take this and we pip install setup.py upgrade, and then we run this setup.py upgrade dot, you'll see that it has rewritten setup.py and setup.cfg. And you can see 
that it automatically migrated all of that data, that all that metadata into this metadata format. So you can see like we got metadata with all of these fields. We got this find packages, which is now this specialized find colon thing. And you can see that the exclude argument uh, was, was sent here. And we also got our command line down here as well. And setup.py just becomes these very, very simple two lines. And actually you can leave this out in some cases um, if you're using PyProject, for instance. But we're not using PyProject, so <laughs> you still need this little file. Um, so that's setup pi upgrade. There's another tool that I wrote called setup CFG format. Did install setup CFG format. And this is a code formatter that takes your setup.cfg and kind of normalizes the output. It also adds some fields that are helpful. So if we run setup, oops, actually activate the virtual setup set up CFG format on setup.py. Uh, setup.cfg, yeah, not on setup.py. <laughs> it's like, what, what happened? Um, what did it actually change? Uh, I don't know what it changed. I think it reordered some stuff. Um, but it also does some stuff like if you have a talks.ini, which has uh, test dev lists, you know, let's say you're testing against Python 3.7, setup CFG format, I thought knew how to do this. Test devs? <laughs> Why do I not remember this option? Anyway, there's, there is some option where it'll automatically format out all of your classifiers. Also, if you have a license file, workspace license, I'll just copy a license here. Um, oh, was I calling it wrong? No, I'm not calling it right. Um, but you can see here, like, it will automatically add license information if you have a license sitting around, and it does some magical detection there. But anyway, that's uh, that's set up up high, kind of a crash course, as well as declarative metadata. Uh, I have switched all of my packages to using declarative metadata because I think that it's much better than the code-based approach, but hopefully you guys found this interesting. I will link both of those tools in the description so you can check them out. If you guys have additional stuff you want me to talk about, leave a comment below or reach out to me on my various platforms. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.